Hello and welcome to Winning Conversations. It's February, it's Valentine's month, and we are so excited to bring you a month-long series called Couples. Every week we're going to sit down with a ministry couple that you know and love and hear their story, hear how God brought them together, how they worked together to come through on the other side in victory and in faith of some pretty pressing situations and things that they walk through together. We talk about the mushy stuff, the love and relationships, but we also talk about communication and conflict resolution and learning how to be one and seeking God and His face for their decisions all along the way. We're going to kick off this series talking to Pastor Phil and Diane Thurman. They have a really sweet love story and how God brought them together, brought them into the ministry together, and just you get to hear the longevity in a relationship built around Christ and also just their willingness to grow together. So I really hope you enjoy it. Let's just jump right into it. We are so happy we are with Pastor Phil and Pastor Diane. Thank you guys so much. How are you this morning? We're great. Great. Doing well? Doing yeah. well. Fantastic. Um, I... I'm so excited about this conversation because it's been one I've been wanting to have since we said we're going to be doing this. Um, I don't know if you guys realize that, but I have been looking forward to this for a while because I have so many kind of things that I think you guys do exceptionally well that um, I just as I, I've never had the chance to really talk to you ever. Um, I've heard amazing things about you from my mother and like the, the uh, groups that you guys do. I've had more experience with you, obviously, uh, right. Pastor Phil. The first time I saw you preach, I was taken aback by how I'm like immediately aware of how strong your relationship was with the Holy Spirit. Like it just was something like that gentleman spends time with the Holy Spirit. And I was like, oh, like that's Okay. I want to listen to what he's saying because there's something significant coming from you. You're in a marriage. There's no way that's just you by yourself. You know, like, like right. there's, it can't just be you moving forward in the Holy spirit and, and you're not. And so I've never had a chance to hear you speak as much as I would love to, obviously. And so that's why I want to kind of like, like what was your Holy spirit journey as you guys were in a relationship together? Well, we received the baptism of the Holy spirit after it was about five years after we accepted the Lord. You know, we just, we were really not informed about the Holy Spirit. We were in a Baptist church, which, you know, where you don't um, don't hear as much about the teaching of the Holy Spirit. And so, um, anyway, we, we received the baptism, like I said, about five years, almost five years after we accepted the Lord, and it just uh, having the whole, the fullness of the Holy Spirit made all the difference in our lives. Before I would open my Bible, you know, and in the Baptist Church they have you know your daily Bible readings and your quarterly, and and so I would be faithful and I would read it, but I would close my Bible and th- say, well, I don't understand what that meant, but I, <laughs> but I read it, you know, and after then. Uh, I would open my Bible, and the Lord would just open and reveal what that scripture meant, to, you know, where I had never been able to to see so freely and openly when I when I studied. And so it just uh, the Holy Spirit, he's a gentleman, he's our teacher, he's our guide, he's our leader, he's our companion, and it just the Holy Spirit, uh, is such a blessing and it's really taught taught us we just learned so much more uh, greater depth and understanding and so how long were you married when you finally received the whole you know received the gift of the holy spirit well we received the holy spirit in 1972 so we were married in 1965 so it was about seven, about seven years, years. Did it, how did that impact your marriage once you guys both received it? Completely the changed it. Completely. I'm assuming for the better. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and I, I say that as someone, I've only, you know, I'm mm. going to celebrate my three year anniversary here in, you know, four months. And then someone else next to me. Me. <laughs> how long? Are you, these are just, I, I, I just, I'm, a, I'm a, a week and three days in. So <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> yeah, you, we're thriving over here. <laughs> we'll you know, be 57 years at the end of this month. And this is like the thing, like I'm 
pray that I get that much time, you know, like with my wife, but like knowing that you guys had that with the Holy spirit, that like the growth of that, like the maturity of that, that's the stuff that I just makes my heart smile. Cause I want to know like, man, like you've walked through some things that, ha, huh, if the Holy spirit wasn't there, who knows? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but first I want to hear from pastor Diane, because we heard a little bit from pastor yeah. Phil about their love story and how they met oh, on yeah. his podcast. Go check it out. Um, <laughs> but I want to hear like how from your side, how y'all met and how y'all got together and all of that. Okay. Well, um, we had, we have known each other. We met when we were sophomores in high school and we met at a football game and I had gone to watch my boyfriend. He was a star quarterback <laughs> <laughs> playing that night. Um, at, at the football game, and Phil had uh, brought a friend with him, a girlfriend, and he was just sitting, they were just sitting right down the row from us, and we just all, you know, how kids are, we just all started talking and visiting, and um, so that was how I was introduced to him that night, and um, after, after that, we just, we became friends, you know, he would just um, call me, you know, and we'd just go and have a coke date and, or go somewhere, <laughs> you know, go to a movie or, or whatever. But um, it was just always based on a friend relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, we enjoyed one another's companionship, but there was, you know, there was no love relationship at that point. And... Uh, then after, uh, like I said, our sophomore year and our junior year, um, that was our relationship. We we didn't go to the same schools. He went to Amarillo High. We were raised in Amarillo. I was raised all my life in Amarillo. He was raised partly in Fort Worth and and then partly in Amarillo. So. Um, Anyway, he went to Emerald High, and I went to Tascosa, and so we were rivals in, in <laughs> that sense. But we just just began to have such just a good friendship. When we graduated, he went into the to the service, and then when he uh, came home from being in the service, he called me again, and you know we just kind of. Uh, struck up our friendship that we had before, and but this time he had just—I think he shared this on the other podcast. Mm -hmm. He had grown and matured a lot, and I had changed a lot. And I just went to the door, and I just—I was surprised. <laughs> you know, he looked so much different, and I, <laughs> he was so her. handsome. And so from that point on, it. We weren't just friends. I mean, I, it's like I just kind of immediately just fell in love with him, you know, from that point. And the important thing, <laughs> <laughs> the important thing to remember about um, relationships with any couples is that if you don't start out with a good foundation of a friendship, things will not go well with you because friendship is the basis of any relationship. And because that's where you you get to know one another in just a, a different way. You know, you're not out looking for anything specifically. Or you don't have any hidden agenda. Mm -hmm. You know, you just want to have someone you can just share things with. And so... Um, that's really important for for every couple to understand is just to have uh, that good basic foundation of friendship. So. I, love that. I love that. That's so sweet. <laughs> um, so the seasons that you've gone through, friendship being like the, the main focus of your relationship, has that been something that has like – sticking with date nights and having, you know, time to have fun together and things like that. Is that, would you say that that's like the main 
or a big part of your relationship and how y'all grow together is making sure you have time set, like set aside for just spending time together, having fun, not taking things so seriously. You know what I mean? Has that been something that y'all have done in y'all's 50 you plus year? Yeah. Uh, we still date. <laughs> you keep dating. Yeah. You, you know, you keep courting, you keep dating. You just don't let it uh, get old. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, our dating now is different than what it was, you know, back then. Yeah. But uh, we still, you know, we go out on dinner dates. We do special things, you know, together. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we've we've kept our togetherness a lot. When we went into ministry, we worked together. So we were around one another constantly all of the time. And so... I think that that you know that helps you to mature in your understanding and your relationship of one another, uh, seeing the the good and the and the negative yeah. as well, and you you learn to work and blend with that, and and uh, it it just becomes very fruitful. Has that ever been challenging doing ministry together? as well as doing life together, like you're with each other all the time. Has that ever been something that's been hard or something you'd have to work through? Well, I fired her several times. (laughs) 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 If that is. You you don't go without trials in your life. Yeah. Uh, But you, it's how you deal with those trials in life. And we've always been able to communicate. And that's one thing I think, you could say would be a success in the relationship is uh, we we just communicated and we still communicate to this day. If something's bugging me, I I let her know and and uh, we talk about it and uh, we get a, a resolve yeah. uh, concerning that uh, and and vice versa. Uh, whenever we were uh, you know ministering and everything else. Uh, I used to, you know, I'd go into the the office at the church, take care of all the business, have my meetings and different things um, and so forth. And she would be at home with the kids, taking care of the kids um, and everything else. And I would come, when I would come home, I would, um, you know, go in, prop my feet up on the, (laughs) you know, the stool in front of me and sit back in the chair and, and she'd still be working and uh, everything else. So one day she said, um, she said to me, she said, Phil, we need to have an appointment. I'm, I'm making an appointment with you. You make appointments with everybody else and you sit down with them on make an appointment with you. I need to talk to you. I said, okay. I said, you don't need an appointment. I'm right here. <laughs> she said, no, I want an appointment. I want, I want you to listen and I want to, I want to do all the talking. I have some things I need to say to you. Mm-hmm. I said, okay. So she made her appointment, and um, we met, and uh, she started explaining. She says, you know, you come home. Uh, I've already taken, I've been taking care of the kids all day long. Uh, I'd like to have an adult conversation, you know, other than just with children yeah. and everything else. Just like to sit in and talk, but you don't want to talk anymore. Because you've talked to adults all day long in counseling and all that kind of stuff, and uh, you're, you're ready just to be quiet and uh, watch TV or read a book or whatever. And uh, so she continued, and she said, uh, I'm still working. I fixed the meals. I'm, I'm washing clothes. I'm doing this. You don't do the dishes. You don't do this, this, or this, mm-hmm. you know, and... Uh, and I said, okay. And um, she said, I need some help. So I realized at that point that, you know, she she was just, by the time she went to bed, she was exhausted, mm-hmm. you know, and I was not exhausted by then. <laughs> I'm ready to talk and everything yeah. else because I've had my break, so to speak. So uh, uh, after she did that, I, I realized that, I needed to pitch in. I needed to. Uh, I needed to do chores. I needed to help out, other than just going to church. And you know, I, you know, I thought I had everything in proper order, uh, but I didn't. I 
thought I did, mm-hmm. but I didn't. And uh, so whenever I started pitching in and helping, started doing things around the house and and doing chores and everything else, it freed her up and it gave her a little bit more liberty to be able to uh, enjoy, uh, you know, having a family and and uh, a husband and everything else that was communicating. So yeah. I think that's when our communication really began to pick up uh, with a with a greater understanding and appreciation for who she was. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's my help me, but she's not my slave. Right. <laughs> well, know? I think it's not just her communicating her needs to you, but it's how you take them too. And because right. you could have taken offense, like oh, you're complaining, you're here all day. You know what I mean? Like, it's also how you respond it's not just how you communicate, but how you respond to it also. Um, Pastor Diane, how did you handle that time, that season in your life? What was that like for you, your perspective of it? Well, this is when our children weren't real small, but they were younger, you know. And uh, so I was, oh, and that was the, at the time that Crystal was born, too. So, you know, got a new fairly young child in the house along with the two older ones. So, you know, finding that balance was a challenge. But, um, I, you know, I thought about it for several days before I approached him because I didn't want to come across, you know, just like you said, just nagging him and complaining and getting in a big argument because I didn't want that to happen. It worked out really well. I learned the lesson of you can be assertive without being argumentative. That's good. Mm-hmm. It was a big accomplishment mm-hmm. for me because before I'm, I've always been a quieter person, and so I I wouldn't all the time speak up when something was bothering me. I would just let it build up and build up and build up, and then I would. <laughs> Yeah, explode. Explode. <laughs> explode. <laughs> and so uh anyway, that at that time in our in our lives, it just it made all the difference. Mm-hmm. And what we what we did was he was very receptive because of the way I approached him. Yeah. If I had approached him differently, it would have been a whole different ball game. <laughs> you know, it would have ended up us going to be upset with each other, you know. But uh, we had a good conversation, and from that point on, he really took took the lead, and he said, okay, kids, we're all going to, I mean, we had Paul and Tiffany, and they were old enough to, to do their chores, so um, we decided Saturday morning would be our, <laughs> our day that we, we cleaned the house, and so everybody had their assignments. And then through the week, we had certain things that they were responsible for, and we got we got organized. We got, um, you know, it wasn't a thumbs down thing. It was just everybody pitching in mm-hmm. and doing their part so that we we could have you know some peace in the house, yeah. and and uh, everyone would. Um, they needed to learn to have their own responsibilities. You know, today I think in so many households, it's just, you know, it's all about it's all about them and and what they want and and creates uh, chaos, <laughs> right? So, anyway, it um, it did free us up, and I mean, until the day that they left home, <laughs> we still had that same plan. You know, it, I mean, in the ministry, you don't always have every Saturday available, but we work, we just worked around everything. You have to learn everyone that uh, is in ministry. There is no, nothing is ever set in stone. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not. But you have to just be open and, and teachable. And I mean, this is one of his main sayings. He's always ministered forever be open teachable and subject to change so from a obviously a father perspective and you're dealing with the, the children at home and you're dealing with ministry raising three kids at that age and giving them responsibility was it was it a difficult transition for the kids to to kind of come on board with the fact that hey it was now time to chip into the family or they really did pretty well to with the adjustment and did you find it did, i always am curious because 
this this house has a lot of pastors, like a lot of people that have had ministry backgrounds, and then obviously a lot of their kids are still here, and it's always impressive to see you know PKs and but I'm always curious about being the pastor of children that balance between ministry and parenting, you know, because you of all people know that your schedule is not your own when you get into ministry. It's you're pulled to wherever the Holy Spirit's pulling you to, or the crisis that's in front of you, you know, the fires that have to be put out or insert said situation. But sometimes that comes at a price of your children because yeah. how do you balance that? So was that something that was a difficult struggle for you guys in, in the ministry and in parenting with, you know, three, three kids? Well, in the it, house? Was a, it was a challenge. Uh, the, the one thing that uh, I always, you know, shared with, with the children was, is I never expected them to be uh, like mom and, and dad, you know, to follow in our footsteps, so to speak, uh, only if they really had a call, a genuine call. Um, but, and I never, I never tried to make them feel the pressure of that. Mm-hmm. And um, I always, especially our son, um, I, I told him at one point in our relationship that uh, I said, Paul, dad may not always agree with everything that you do, but dad will always be there Mm -hmm. regardless. Um, And I have been, he's been through a lot. He's put us through a lot, (laughs) you know, without going into great detail Mm -hmm. and everything else. But, um, you know, his, his reciprocation back now that, you know, he's older and, and has his, has had his own children and everything else is uh, he he has tremendous respect you know for his dad and and um, so it, it's it's been that type of relationship um, Tiffany she uh, hasn't really given us any heartache or heartbreak so to speak and Crystal, she always tells us, "I'm I'm the good one." Yeah. <laughs> I'm the and good she, one. It's the truth, and it's the truth. She she was, she was and and still lie. is. But uh, uh, yes, it's it was a challenge. It was a challenge to to balance the ministry aspect of it, uh, because we had a Christian school in our church, mm-hmm. and I was the the head of that Christian school. Uh, I was their bus driver. I was. You know, I was their pastor. I was their dad. And uh, to use all of those hats and everything else, Tiffany came to me one day, and she said, Dad, is there any place that I can go that you're not there? (laughs) And my response back to her was, where is it that you want to go that you don't want Dad to be? (laughs) Right. And she had to think about that for a little bit. (laughs) And she said, you know, you're, you're my dad. You're my pastor. You're... Principal. I'm you're, um, you're the principal <laughs> of the school. You're our bus driver. You take us to all of our sporting events, you, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And and uh, I said, well, uh, I said, you're, you're so fortunate to have your dad constantly there and overseeing your life and, and everything else and just being a part. I said, dad loves being a part, mm-hmm. you know, of your life. And uh, so uh, I know from... You know, from her responding and, and looking back and everything else, I mean, she loves both of us uh, dearly. But uh, uh, she's a, she's a daddy girl, <laughs> you know. And we we do things together now, you know. That's she's what fifty fifty one. She's fifty one, and. Uh, we still go together. Well, I go shopping with her. I do this and stuff. You know, we just we just work together like a team, That's just right. like we did when we were younger. I've I've been a pastor's kid literally my entire life, and growing up, I always was confused and kind of like upset at the fact that I felt like I had to share my parents. Like they're off with other people, mm-hmm. or they're counseling other people, or they have appointments, or I mean, that happens all the time now that I'm older. I like, 
I don't really care as much, <laughs> but <laughs> growing up when I was younger, it was definitely like, I feel like I'm having to share my parents with all of these other people. And that felt unfair to me at the time. I wanted my parents around all the time. I wanted them to focus on me. Why are you taking these kids out for, I couldn't understand. Like, why are you caring for these children when you have your children at home? So as like on the other end of it, it is difficult to like wrap your head around as a child. Like your parents are, aren't just for you. They're for everyone kind of. Um, but I, growing like now that I'm older, I can appreciate what like that role as a pastor, like what that carries. And it's, and it's a lot of work for them too. It's, you know, it was selfish of me as a kid, but cause I didn't understand, but now I have like a better appreciation for the job mm -hmm. and cause it's not just a job. It's your the, a lifestyle. It's yeah. what you do. So, well, I think we, we tried to do our best to, to make them feel apart and uh, to incorporate their talents and giftings mm -hmm. uh, into the, the church and, and everything as much as we possibly could to make them feel apart yeah. and not just uh, the PK kids yeah. that had to, be, had to do no wrong. You know, they had to be perfect. They, they couldn't make any mistakes and everything else. And, you know, I told them, I said, listen, you're going to make mistakes in life. And it, and uh, mom and dad are not going to look at you from a standpoint of that you're going to be perfect. Yeah. You know, and everything else. We, but we want you to feel and be a part. And I think in most parts they did yeah. overall. And, you know, I can identify with what you, what you're saying though, about, not understanding because you don't want to share your parents yeah. <laughs> in the natural. Any children don't want to have to share their parents with somebody else. They, uh, they want you to gravitate completely to them. Was it hard sharing your husband? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a big one because um, you just, he is on call, I mean, 24-7. And, I mean, it may be 3 o'clock in the morning. It may be 4 o'clock in the afternoon. You just never know. But you, it, it's, a, it's a grace. It takes a grace on a pastor's wife. No pastor's wife can, do, can be a pastor's wife without being the, having the grace of God to, to do that, you know. And I'm sure there are a lot of... Um, pastors that that don't make it for that very reason because they're trying to do something in their own strength without the ability and the help of the Lord and it just can't be done can't be done well <laughs> it can't be done <laughs> or well, for a long right? amount of time but yes. so so besides the, the what were were there any other like I don't want to call it negativity and service struggles, but you know, besides, I know you guys had a business before you went into ministry right? and then you went into full-time ministry. I mean, I'm assuming it wasn't all rainbows and Skittles from that point on. Was there, were there, there, there relational navigational pitfalls to that were like, Hey, we didn't know that was going to be as difficult as it was, but man, it was, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't easy. Right. Well, the first seven years of, of our married life, um, you know, when we got born, when, when we got married, we were neither of us was born again. Mm -hmm. I, I thought Diane was, but uh, she tricked you. <laughs> she tricked. <me. laughs> no, she went to she went to church. So my, my assumption of her going to church was that you had to be really connected mm -hmm. and everything else. Well, she she knew all about Jesus because she had you know gone to church and been in the classes and everything else. Where I did not attend church whenever I was. When I was young, my uh, my family didn't go to church. They weren't churchgoers. So first seven years were just, they were difficult because of uh, more so my lifestyle, the way I was raised and everything else. Uh, going to nightclubs and different things like that was just, just a way of life for me. That's the way my family was. I'd been doing that since I was a young child. I would go with them to nightclubs and uh, just participate. Diane wasn't raised in that type of a family. And um, so, therefore, whenever when we got married, it was a challenge for her because my I would my parents lived in Albuquerque. We lived in Santa Fe, which is about an hour away, 
And so when they would go out uh, honky tonking on the weekends and uh, night clubbing. <laughs> That's and, the best uh, phrase for it. Honky tonkin. <laughs> yeah. And so they would invite us to go with them. I wasn't of age yet. I was, uh, you know, 20 years old, uh, 19, 20 years old. Uh, and uh, that's just what we did. We did that as a family. We would go out to the club and I would go with them. And so Diane had never been in a club in her life, so she knew nothing about it. But it's not the best atmosphere for a young couple to be involved in and everything yeah. else. But uh, that was the way I was raised, and it was just normal for me. Mm-hmm. So uh, we would go out to the nightclubs and, and uh, that sort of thing. So she could just be – she wanted to be with me. We were just newlyweds, you know, and she just wanted to be a part. What did you think of that, Pastor Diane? What did you – how – That's awful. You, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just was not me. I, yeah. I have our family never ever my I I never remember having a beer in our in our refrigerator ever. You know, I think maybe Daddy drank maybe a beer or so before that we were born, but he he made a commitment. He said our children will never see alcohol in our home. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it was just like a, a shock for me. But one thing I want to bring up while while we're on that subject of well, the first seven years being really hard mm-hmm. was you know the word of God, which I didn't know we weren't trained. Mother and Daddy didn't teach us this way um, about not being unequally yoked. You know, when you when you begin to come to the age that you can go out on dates and everything, you you know, parents really need to teach their children that that is very important to be very watchful about the kind of people you choose to be with, Mm -hmm. because even though. You're just thinking, oh, well, I, I'll go out with that person. You know, it's not going to hurt. But then you get asked out by that person again and again and again. And that being together, be, then you begin to form a relationship and and begin to de- develop feelings for one another. And once that happens, the opportunity for a real love relationship mm-hmm can happen and so then you begin to be yoked and when you enter into that kind of a relationship and and are yoked then you know you most people do end up getting married and because you haven't chosen the right people to to associate with you know that's when the the hardships come because you've you've allowed yourself to be with someone that that just doesn't have the same uh, values, the same uh, training, the sub, same you know being raised the same way, and uh, it only, of course, only the Lord coming into our lives and and putting a, any couple together are they going to make it? But uh, Without without the Lord, it's it's so hard, and and uh, that's such a a valuable lesson that every every family, you know, when you're raising your children, that that is the as they begin to to want to go out and go on dates, you know, you better you better think real seriously about who you choose. To have associations with, because you don't, you don't want to develop a relationship that's, that's not going to end up well. Yeah, um, let's get cheesy and mushy, shall we? Because um, tis the season for love. Uh, tell us one thing. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I was just a fantastic intro to this question. Oh. I was just really, I was loving. Thank the you. Okay. I was just enjoying it. One thing you love about your spouse, 
please share? You get go to first. go first. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can honestly say the thing that I really love about my husband is he is a very unselfish person. And I can't say the same about myself, <laughs> but he just, you know, he always thinks of everyone else before he thinks of himself. And he's always been that way in our relationship. You know, he thinks of me before he thinks of himself. So I love you for that. One of the things that really blessed me as being in the ministry and ministering with my husband is doing counseling sessions with him. I would sit there amazed as he counseled people because he would sit there and he would just listen and then to their story or to their situation. And then when they were through, then the way he handled things you know, as he answered their questions or prayed with them or whatever, he just had such a peace and such a grace on him to be able to to really help them and send them away with with hope and encouragement. And uh, but the main thing was the way that he handled himself and was so dependent upon the Holy Spirit and, you know, in the answers that he gave them or whatever. It, uh, it was an honor for me to, to have the privilege of sitting in on those council sessions with him. Did that make it easier for you in terms of being a wife to see that side of him that a lot of spouses don't get to see? Yes, it 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 was very helpful because i you know i saw this i saw love in action through him awesome that's amazing so, i think that's it <laughs> <laughs> that's All right, nice. pastor phil you got to top that come on <laughs> good luck <laughs> well one of the things that i appreciate about diane is um she, when she loves, she loves deeply, and um, um, it's it's been that way in, in our personal relationship together. Um, the the depth uh, of that love relationship, and uh, uh, I've really appreciated that about her. She does she's does done the same thing with our the churches that we've pastored. Uh, she loves them very deeply. Where I I love the people, but if God says go somewhere. I'm ready to go. Mm-hmm. You know, let's let's move on. Where on the other hand, she doesn't like to be uprooted, and so mm-hmm. the decision for us to even move here was hard because uh, we had built a home that was her home. You know, uh, e- even though I was present there, it, it was still uh, her home, um, and it was something that we we built together, and she fashioned it and. Mm-hmm decorated it and did it all inside and outside uh, the way that she really wanted it. So uh, I'm, I'm saying that that's the way, way her life has been uh, with me. She's always been there. She's been a, just a, a tremendous helpmeet. I couldn't do what I've done if it hadn't been for her support. That's awesome. So sweet. I'm not going to cry. It's hey, Dan, it's, <laughs> it's, it's nothing. I have something in my eye. Right. Okay. I was really okay. curious because this is like, I always, I know my answer for my own relationship, but I really want to, like, what is your favorite quirk or what is a, it could be favorite or like, eh. <laughs> a, a quirk about the other person that you're like, this is their quirk. Go. <laughs> wow. See how he, he, ladies, you know. Ladies first, Ladies right? first, so he knows what kind of rope you're giving him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, favorite quirk. Well, he's very point blank. So, you know, he he wants what he wants when he <laughs> wants it, you know. <laughs> Sometimes it takes me a little while to get moving and or whatever, and so... 
Well, he's basically a neat freak, too, so. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that can be a quirk because I don't always have everything right in place at all times. But you know where it's at. I know where it's at. That's like, <laughs> I get you right now. We're, we're in the same cut of cloth there. Cause sure. I know exactly where things are, just not where they're supposed to be. <laughs> I like them right there, lined up. Labeled? Not labeled. They don't have to be labeled. It's just, don't get crazy. They have their place. That's where they need to be. Love he it. is very, very, very organized. <laughs> I'm assuming you have a very nice garage. Uh, well, I did have. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we keep it pretty organized, yes. Perfect. So what about you, Pastor Phil? She is always, always late. <laughs> always. That's my wife's anointing. <laughs> late. I'm always standing down at the bottom of the stairs. Diane, we have to go. It's time. <laughs> What's the quote from, uh, it's... Uh, Princess Diaries, a queen is never late. Everyone else is simply early. Right. That's, that's what it is. Yes, that's Everyone else is. is just early. <laughs> You're right on time. Unless that clock is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do the, we have a fun little yeah. marriage game, most likely two. Um, I can do a couple and you can do a couple. If that means, sounds yes, good. Who is most likely to... Forget an anniversary. Neither one of Neither us. One of us. <laughs> really? Really. Well. Don't forget birthdays. Don't forget anniversaries. What? Absolutely <laughs> not. You guys are good. Okay, what about this one? Most likely to get angry when driving. <laughs> Pastor Phil is raising his hand. Yes. yes. I couldn't hear at home. That was Pastor Phil giving a triumphant hand raise right there. <laughs> Uh, okay. What about most likely to overspend? Diane. <laughs> <laughs> what do you overspend on? Um, probably things for the children. I would. <laughs> I mean, is that overspending or is that investing in That's your future? <laughs> in their future. Mine would be shoes. Shoes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mine would be shoes. That's so funny. Um, who's most likely, and this is, this is, it's a mean one, but I'm sorry. Most likely to share a secret from the pulpit. Me. You? <laughs> <laughs> I'm always like, that's yeah. a tough one as a pastor. I'm like, I don't even think about, I don't even think about that responsibility because I don't have that in my life. But I'm like, oh man. <clears throat> they, the kids, the kids would tell me and so would uh, Diane, you know, the, the only thing that I ever have is my own life experience. So with my family or whatever. So sometimes I would share some, some, uh, secrets, you know, from the pulpit. <laughs> sometimes by accident, I would say something and the kids, of course, <laughs> Dad. <laughs> you know, so that's me. Uh, Who's the most likely to fall asleep first? Him. <laughs> He is. I mean, his head cannot even barely hit the pillow. It's a superpower. <laughs> he is gone. I'm it's because I'm giving out so much all the time. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That's what it is. Do you like, is it like a movie, like a impossible to stay awake through? I go to sleep. Un unless it's something I'm really interested in. If it's something that I'm really interested in, really want to watch, mm -hmm. then I'll stay awake, but. Even then, it better be a three o'clocker. You know what I mean? Like, I want a matinee. So, as our closing, our last question on every podcast is, how are you winning in life? We want to know how you, how you think your spouse is winning in life, if both of you could answer that question. Well, I think Diane said that in the very beginning. Uh, was has been our relationship with the Holy Spirit after after those initial seven years and everything else, and we got on track, you know, with the relationship with the Holy Spirit, um, I, I think that um, that has been the key, you know, for, for Diane that's helped her to, to really develop a, a much deeper relationship, you know, with uh, 
you know, with with her relationship with Heavenly Father and and the Holy Spirit, her depth is just uh, soared to to great heights. She's a she's a great, wonderful uh, pastor's wife, and she's one that has stood alongside of and and been so supportive of uh, of me and and um, and the children and everything else and in this relationship it's it's not been easy i mean it's we've had our difficulties and in our times and so forth but as we've gotten older as we've really learned to to know one another we made a determination that that we were going to to really learn one another and uh, be appreciative of of that fact and i think the holy spirit's what has made the the big difference i know for diane in what I've witnessed in her. Well, and I feel that Phil is just a winner in life because of the relationship that he has developed over all these years with the Lord, coming from the background that he came from, and, you know, which was very, just a very negative, negative background, and stepping in. And once, like I think he said on the on the other podcast, he said I I served the devil a hundred percent, so I made up my mind I'm going to serve God the hundred percent, and that is a truthful statement. He has been faithful. He's been consistent, and that that's a winner in any person's life. If you're you know you are a winner when you put Jesus first and and are completely and totally dedicated to um to the lord and to the and and the passion and just that you want to know that that you have fulfilled what god has spoken to you to do that's i mean that's that's amazing to hear from both you and i just want to say thank you both so much for being here this house us this house everyone we are so blessed to have you guys a part of this church family and to just keep pouring in to the people that you're able to pour into. It's such an amazing blessing. So thank you for doing this. Um, we, this is so much fun. Love it. Um, thank you very much for all of the listeners out there. We appreciate you every time you have one of these being here. I hope you have a fantastic Valentine's Day month. <laughs> <laughs> it is, you know, we hope you enjoyed this. Um, please uh, look out for every Friday we're releasing these. Thank you so much, Heritage Family. We can't wait to uh, give you more winning conversations.